Hi, Simon here, and this is Maya 0.67. This is a massive update which touches on almost every game system. The focus of this update's really been on polishing existing systems, uh, but I couldn't help myself and had to add literal polishing to the game. So you see this floor, uh, you can see little scuff marks and footprints, there's mud, uh, someone's trodden in this dirt from outside the room, you see little imprints, and they've trod that all around the base. So, luckily, we have a new item to build, which is the Utility Robot Cleaning Variation. Finally, you can live out your power fantasy as a vacuum cleaning robot on a far-off alien world. So, you just drive around, and if you see these little squares, drive over them, and that will suck up any dirt or other scuffs or damage to the floor, and polish it out. You don't have to do this in first person, although it is quite therapeutic. The robot does have a good cleaning algorithm if left to its own devices, or you can give it click-drag orders as well. The utility robot built for repair has also been upgraded, so no items that need repairing uh, will show a box around them and be highlighted, so you can easily pick out the things which you want to go weld. As well as the utility robots, the imp robot has also been upgraded. It's first person now has item manipulation, so let's go find something to move around. This atmosphere generator is movable, so we can pick it up now, and then we can use R and T and rotate and manipulate it. We can put it down. We can also move other movable items, such as barrels, which is useful for rearranging our storage areas. And we can also pick up some furniture items, like this table, Give it a rotate, put it in a better orientation. You can also pick up organic items. So here's a cat. I can pick this cat up, which will probably annoy it. And we can pick up the chickens, which may be very useful if they, say, escaped or wandered off. You can go put them back in the livestock containment room. Next up, we have the propagator which is a way of growing seedlings from seeds. We click it and it will start growing little seedlings and that will allow us to place the hydroponic planters for that type of seedling. This slows down the building process of the hydroponics a bit, but also adds a bit of realism to the game and a little more of kind of decision making and choice and manual interaction in the hydroponics room. You can zoom in and you can even watch the little seedlings grow in their little uh, planter containers. The seedlings will grow at different rates based on the species of what you're growing. Uh, nothing takes that long, although it does add a slight bit more time tension on building your hydroponics. But in testing, it, it actually makes it work better, as players will place less and be more thoughtful about what they want to build. So next up is building rooms. You'll notice there's icons for every tile placed, and that shows you what type of room you're building, which is very useful if you're placing two rooms next to each other, for example, and will let you kind of easily de delineate between different rooms. You'll notice that when building the room, it's now slightly more sporadic and comes in little bits and pieces as they put up the scaffolding and take it down again. Uh, less of a jolt. It's more realistic and a bit more relaxed. It doesn't take much more time, but perhaps does uh, give a slightly more gradual expansion feeling to the game. So next up, we have the wall screens, which have been upgraded to show graphs. Um, I've always been a big proponent of having the game's UI actually in the game, and these are a good example. Uh, you can now see different bits of information, like your atmosphere, grid power, temperature, and even a seismograph shown on screen with real data. But it also improves your colonists' moods and lets them know what's going on in the base. In the storage room, there's also some new modes for minerals and rations and materials. So not only do you know your current levels, but you can see how they've changed in the past and how they're currently changing as the days go on, which is quite a useful tool. It's most useful for noticing kind of ongoing trends, and that can be really useful for finding and fixing problems before they become too much of an issue, such as your rations running out. Next up, we have the colonist emails, which you'll notice uh, now have user profile pictures, which help humanize the colonist and also help you identify who's actually sending the email. But more importantly, the generation of the emails has changed. They come, they better order some things, uh, they're a better length, and they put more interesting stuff in, and they're more interesting to read. Uh, there's lots of improvements there to be seen, 
and they make the emails a lot more lifelike, but also more useful. Also, we have rendering improvements. So you notice the snow is a lot more detailed. Uh, just the outside color temperatures and things are better. There's uh, some items have kind of uh, the snow has translucence, for example, and subsurface scattering. There's also a brand new renderer, which uh, renders volume using a new bit of code, which I've written to do some ray marching. And that produces really, really nice volumetric fog and kind of smokiness and in the dusty levels really brings the game to life. And talking of Unreal Life, um, there is also an AI player which I've added to the game, which is mostly for my testing, but it may make its way into being some sort of kind of player assist mode. Uh, so if you type in AI player into the console, uh, the game will just start playing itself. Uh, it will place rooms. It doesn't really do uh, layouts particularly well yet, but we'll place the basic items that you need and it will dig rooms, it will call in colonists, it will manage the base power and yeah, it, it, it can just play itself. It's not a sophisticated AI, um, but it is interesting and I'm going to be using this going forward to do effectively constant uh, soak testing of the game and just have it play for hours and hours and will allow us to test out different play styles. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy this update. I will see you guys at 0.68. Don't forget to leave a Steam review. Bye.